Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the pink ribbon shawl. This is an older pattern, oldie but goodie over at Yarnspirations. Today I'm going to break down this pattern in order to show you how to do the stitch work, the assembly, and then the fringing right at the very end. So this is classified as an easy pattern and it truly is. It's only two rows that you need to remember over and over and over until you get to the very edging and the edging is just as simple. So what you're looking at here is a two piece assembly that you cannot see because it's actually behind her uh, neck here on the back. And what we're gonna do is that you'll do the first half up until 30 inches and then you'll come and you'll turn the project around and you will start at the very beginning again and then finish the other side coming down the other side. So it makes it very uniform and the reason why they're doing that is that the edge is nice and frilly in order to have the edging look identical on both sides that we have to just do one side first and then we complete it all the way and then we start again at the very beginning and do the other side on the same project. So we actually grow to the same project as we go. So you'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to play. I have done a diagram. I'm gonna show that to you next and if you wanna freeze frame it you can do so as well so you can take notes. So here's a copy of the diagram that I drew for myself so that I could understand this pattern even more. I actually drew this after I did my sample to be honest with you. So I wanna give you an indication of how it's gonna go. So what we have is that we have two sides. So this is the second half that's done afterward and I'll explain that in a moment. So we're gonna start off with a chain and it says to chain I believe 66 and I'm just gonna flip a sheet of paper and just take a quick look and 66 is the magic number. If you wanna change the size of the shawl, this is the depth of the shawl. So when you're wearing it, this is the top of your neck and this will be hanging down towards your chest just to give you an indication on how that is. And so what you're gonna do if you wanna change the size and make it even deeper then you just do multiples of eight plus then two at the end of your chain. So just keep going eight, 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 eight. Once you're satisfied add two and then you can keep this pattern to be consistent and that includes all the way to the fridging. So you're gonna continue to go back and forth just like you see and you'll repeat row number two and three over and over and over until you get to 30 inches and then there's two rows which does all this frilly stuff. Now P is not a symbol of crochet when it comes to the diagram. I was just lazy but it's actually a pico. So you can see that there's picots on top of these here to give you a really neat look. So once one side is done which includes this section all the way to the edging you're going to turn your project around and this is the starting chain and you're going to turn it around and you're gonna begin. So you have to end, end just like you see here. So you have to start on this side and then you're just gonna get it started and see how these stitches go into where the existing stitches are right underneath so it keeps it looking consistent and when you do this see how these are leaning over to the side when you do the other side then it matches so that it looks seamless all the way across this thing which is actually pretty amazing. So you're gonna establish yourself and then you'll just do the repeat rows of two and three which you already know down here to 30 inches and then you'll continue to do the the out, outer edge as well which is two rows. So it's a very easy configuration and today I'm gonna get you started on doing that. So grab your size H, five millimeter size crochet hook, Karen Simply Soft Yarn. Again, three balls, all that it takes to make one of these. So as we begin today we're going to start off with our chain and this is what it looks like. So the chain goes across your 66 and then you're gonna go back and forth. So you can see that you end up with a definite line going into the vertical just like you see here. So it almost kind of reminds me of a corner to corner stitch where you got them kind of leaning back and forth. They're not quite the same as a corner to corner but that's what it reminds me of and because there's two rows your one is just gonna lean in one direction and the other row leans in the other. So it just goes back and forth like this leaving this beautiful gap and you're gonna go all the way for 30 inches until you get to the other side and when you think it's 30. So when you get to the 30 inches you have to end on row number three and then row number three then we're gonna then do the two rows of edging that's left afterward. But before we begin that we have to get you started on a chain so you can do at least get yourself started and again remember the multiple of eight plus two. So if you want to just a different size you know multiples of eight. So eight, 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 eight to the size that you want add two and then you got your customized sizing. Let's begin. So let's begin by doing a slip knot to begin. This is an easy level tutorial. It's not a beginner. So if you're a beginner though it's really not hard if you just follow along. So you're going to do a chain of 66 if you want the exact one or just chain of multiples of eight plus two. So if I'm gonna do a multiple of eight plus two because I don't need to do the whole thing to show you. So you're going to uh, chain up 66 or multiples of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Okay there's one multiple and then again eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and then I'll do another multiple just for the fun of it. So one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And once you're satisfied then with the length, like you can see this is going to be the width of your, your shawl. So it's not very wide here. This would be like a scarf. Then you can just add two. So one and two. So there's multiples of eight plus two. Let's begin row number one. So now we're going to begin row number one. So we have here multiples of eight plus two and we're going to single crochet second chain from the hook and then you're going to chain four. You're going to skip three and single crochet into the fourth one. Chain up three and then two double crochets into the same one. And then you're going to skip another three, single crochet into the next, chain four, skip another three and then do this fun stuff like you've already done. So the secret here on the chain is that you're skipping three every time you're going to skip anything. So it's always three, 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 three that you're skipping. So let's begin to do row number one. So let's jump right in the pattern. We're gonna go second chain from the hook. So one and two and just single crochet and I always get the back um, um, chain or the back loop of the chain. It just looks nicer. So single crochet there and then we're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three, and four. And you're gonna come back down to the chain and you're gonna skip three. So one, two, and three. Go to the fourth and single crochet. Now we're gonna do our fun stuff here. So in order to do this really kind of neat configuration you're gonna chain three first. So one, two, three. Kind of counts as a double crochet. And then in the same chain that you, you're in that single crochet you're going to double crochet two times. So you're gonna do that every time you hit that kind of configuration when you go across. So it's always gonna be single crochet, chain three and then two double crochets into the same one on this particular row. So skip another three. So one, two and three. Go to the fourth, single crochet. And this is the gapping spaces that you're creating here. So this is a gap space here and we're about to do it again. So one, so we're gonna chain four. So two, three and four and how many are we gonna skip? The answer is always gonna be three. So one, two and three. Go to the fourth for a single crochet and do another one of those fancy configurations that we just did over here. So let's begin to do that. So chain up three. So one, two, three and in the same chain. Double crochet twice. So do you see the repeat pattern going on now? You should be able to. And then we continue to go. So skip three, one, two and three. Go to the fourth. Single crochet and then chain four. So one, two, three and four. Skip three, one, two and three. Go to the fourth. Single crochet and you're gonna do that all the way across and it's just a repeat pattern just like you see in the diagram and then once you get all the way to the end you're just gonna finish it off. So it'll be finishing off with the actual funny configuration that you see here. So chain up three and two double crochet in the same one. And if your stitch count is right and my multiples of eight plus two did work out because I'm gonna skip three so one, two and three and I single crochet into the last one. See? So whether it was chain 66 or multiples of eight plus two you end up with the same thing. Let's go on to row number two which will be repeated every time. So we're gonna repeat two and three then going forward. So let's do number two. So let's do number two. We're gonna chain up our work. This happens every time we're gonna do number two which is every other row. So we're gonna chain a total of five which counts as a double crochet and chain two. So we're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, there's your double crochet and then four and five that's your chain two. And you're going to go into the first chain three space. So look at it here. See how these two double crochets are together? This was that chain three. So if I looked at it from the other point of view remember when we chained up three it's the gapping space that that is creating when you go to do that. So let's turn it around to where we should look and just go right into the gap space and just single crochet. And we're gonna create the same configuration but in this gap space instead now. So it's gonna be chaining up three and double crochet into that same chain space. So it's not like the same stitch it's just a space. So double crocheting twice. So now what you're going to do this is your chain four space that you have here. You're just gonna go around the space and single crochet and that forces that to lean over. See that? So now you're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four 
and then you go to the next one and just get this first one out. So do you see the space? So just go right into the space and single crochet and do another one of those fancy configurations. So single crochet, chain three and two double crochet into the same space. And you're gonna do that all the way across. So you just have to remember that whenever you're doing these things, no matter what road that you're on, there's always gonna be that chain four that skips that you have to have to create in order to have that skip space to look that really amazing when you're wearing it. So now single crochet into the next chain four space and now chain four. So one, two, three and four. And then coming up you see this next one here. Go right into the space. Okay, so single crochet, chain three and two double crochets into the same one. And chain, uh, sorry, in row number two, watch how we're going to finish it. So once you get this last one in, see there's no more of these funny things left. So now you have to chain two, so one and two, and you're just going to put in a double crochet into this chain one space way over here. You're gonna do that every time that you're finishing off row number two. Okay, so you can see that the row two here just moved everything to the side. So now the next row number three is gonna come back in the other direction. So let's turn our work and do row number three next. So in row number three we're gonna come up and we're gonna start off with a chain one, single crochet into the first double crochet we just did and then chain four and then this will go back into the next chain three gap space that you have. So a single crochet, there should actually be um, three chains there, not two. Let me draw that in. And then coming back in, two double crochets to the same space and then single crochet right into this chain four space, chain four and then come back to the top and keep doing that as we go across in row number three. So now we're gonna go up for row number three and you'll be repeating this so it'll be repeats two and three. So I can see that there's a double crochet here. So whenever I see that I wanna automatically chain up one and I wanna single crochet into the first stitch which is the top of that same double crochet. And now to, in order to begin I have to chain four. So one, two, three and four and I come to the first configuration just separate that last space out there. Single crochet, chain of three and two double crochets into that same space. Okay, once you get that done just go into the next chain four space single crochet around it and that pulls it leaning over. So you can see it's gone over from here to here and now it's back again and now chain four. So one, two, three and four and then come into the next one just automatically grab that one that's out on its own. Single crochet, chain three and two double crochet into the same one. Okay and then single crochet into the next chain four space create another chain four. So one, two, three and four and you keep doing that all the way across and here you're coming up to the very last one available to you. So you go right in, single crochet, chain up three and then two double crochet into the same space. So whenever you're finishing row number three you automatically see this chain five space. You just single crochet right into the space itself just like that. So it's actually kind of a neat idea. So on one side when we go to finish on this other side in row number two we chain two and then double crochet in. This one here we just go right into the space itself. So we just turn our work and let's just repeat rows number two just so you get it and going and you can always reverse this video as well to start up row number two. So row number two if you remember it was chaining up a five. So one, two, three, four and five and then you just come to the next chain space that you see here which is part of this. Single crochet, chain three and two more double crochet in there. Okay and then just single crochet to the next chain four space and now you're gonna create another chain four space. So one, two, three, four. Just come to the next top of the next one here the space and single crochet, chain three and two more double crochet in. And then single crochet in the chain four space. One, two, three, four. 
go into the next one here and keep on doing that all the way across. So you're just gonna go back and forth doing rows number two and three just like this and then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna end on row number three and then you're going to start the edging. So what I'll do is that I'll show you how to do the edging next. So you're gonna repeat rows number two and three until you get that to be a total of 30 inches right from the start all the way to 30 inches ending on row number three and then what we're going to do then is that we're gonna start on row number one of two for doing the edging and the edging is the same on both sides so I only have to show it to you one time. So what we're gonna do is start the edging. Let's begin that next. To begin the edging it has to be started when row number three is right underneath it in order to keep it in balance to the pattern and what we're going to do is then after this then we're gonna turn it around and work on the base in order to do the other side. So to do this then we just have to chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet into the next three stitches which includes this a single crochet that's on the top. So we're gonna go one, two, and three. Nice and easy right? So we just kind of worked our way up and now you have the gapping space that we have here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna single crochet right into that gapping space. So you have a total of four now when you think about it and now this chain four space is where we're gonna play with five trebles but we have to separate those with chain ones for uh, when we do it. So we have to put in our first treble. So wrap the hook twice and going in and I want you to treble and then chain one and then treble and chain one and then treble and keep doing that so you have a total of five trebles all together. Okay so I have what I have here is I have four chain one and the fifth. So there's no chains after the trebles it's only in between them. Okay do you see them there? So now once you have that in you are just going to then uh, single crochet into the chop into this chain space and then begin that all again. So just start, wrap the hook twice and going into the next chain four space and start trebling and then chain one and trebling, chain one and do that so you have five trebles there. Okay and you keep doing that. Yours will obviously be wider. And then once you get your fifth one in you just single crochet to the top of the next chain three space that you have there and you keep doing that all the way until you get to the other side. Now we have this other side here so this has to be your has to be more trebles here. This is a chain four space so we have to continue that right to the edge. And don't forget you put your chain ones that separate them. And then once you have that done your last one's in and all they want you to do is single crochet down to the top of the other single crochet that's already there. So you just have to do that all the way. It looks like it's gonna be lopsided but that's the whole point of this thing. It looks really quite amazing. So let's begin row number two of the edging which is the final. So let's begin row number two and this is the final of the edging and then all we're just gonna do then is then we begin and we start chaining up one and we're gonna put in a single crochet in the first two. So it's gonna be in the top of the first one, the single crochet that we just did, okay? And then it's gonna be in the first treble as well. And what we're gonna do is do a pico. Now if you don't know what a pico is, watch how you do it. So we're gonna do a pico right now. So in order to do that we have to chain up three. So one, two, three and then you're gonna come back down to where you did the single crochet and you're going to slide your hook in so that you see two strands of yarn. Okay, it looks like it's a V. You see that? So when you're looking at it and you're not in it, you're just gonna come down so just look at it and it will jump right in front of you and you're gonna slide the hook in and you're gonna pull through and through. And that's a pico and it creates a like a little nubbly thing. So in the next chain one space you're gonna do a single crochet and then in the next treble you're going to do another pico. So single crochet first and then chain three. So one, two, and three and then coming in and doing sliding it in, pulling it through and through. And that's another pico. So the next one is a chain one space and then the next one 
that was a single crochet and the next one is single crochet right into a treble and another pico. So one, two, three and slide in. And you're gonna do that all the way across. So let me just keep on moving. So single crochet in the next chain one space and then single crochet in the treble which is gonna be another pico. So you can start blazing along as soon as you understand that. Okay, that was in the chain one space and here's the final treble and you're gonna pico first. So single crochet and then pico and then you're going to then put in a single crochet in this chain or in the single crochet that separates the trebles out and then you're gonna single crochet in the first treble and then pico all over again. So you create these nubbly things that are on the top and you're gonna do that all the way across. So in every treble there will be a pico on top in the chain one spaces or just be a single crochet and then you'll single crochet into the middle and again restart it and then once you get to the other side all you just have to do is that once you get beyond the treble you are just going to single crochet the final two and leave the rest empty and then that would be done for this particular pattern. So what you have to do then at the very end of this we have to still do the other side but you have to do this first and then you're gonna just single crochet yourself down the, the one side but we have to do the other side first. So this would be how you would complete side number one. So off camera I just finished off the top edging just like you see and you see that I ended two early. So the last two were single crochets in and it looks like it's supposed to be offset like that and it causes it to open up just like you see. So it's kind of more uh, fanny at the bottom. So what I want you to do is that I want you to pay attention to this. This is where you started. Okay this is the tail that we started with and I need you to flip this project so that you can see the tail and the tail will be like this upside down. So this is the tail where we started and we're gonna start here and go back and forth. So see where this tail is? That's where you want it to be. So don't worry about the one that's on the end and let's begin to do row number one and then rows number two and three are identical to what you already know here. So we just gotta get you started first. So let's begin to do row number one. So in row number one we want to create a new set of yarn here and we're going to attach it right where we started with the other one. So just yarning over and pulling it through and through. So there was a slip knot on there and we're going to now chain four. So if you look at the chart, let me show you the chart next. So here's the chart and so I'm having you flip the project upside down. Okay, so that we can start it here. This is the tail end of where things start, uh, started when we did the other one. So we're, uh, like I just showed you. So we're gonna slip stitch at the beginning and then chain four and we're gonna create what we already know and we're gonna be using the stitches that are underneath. So see how this is single crocheted into this chain? That's where you're gonna play in the same one and then see it's the same ones that you're playing. It's just opposite side. It's like a mirror. So let's begin. So I've already slip stitched in. I wanna chain four. So one, two, three and four and so see where this all is? That's exactly where you wanna play. It's very obvious in the actual project versus the pattern. So single crochet, chain up three and then two single or double crochets into the same one. So you're just making everything polar opposite. So once you get that done then single crochet into the next space and then chain four. So one, two, three and four and I want you then is that you're going to go to the next space right here. See, do you see where it's all equaling up? And go right there. And then chain three and then two double crochets into the same space or same stitch. Okay, and then single or single crochet in the next space that's right beside it. Now chain four, so one, two, three and four and you continue to do that. Then come into this one here and then one, two, three and then two double crochets into the same one and once you get all the way across like I'm about to hit all you're just gonna do then is put a single crochet into the last one. So everything else is now identical. So all you're just gonna do is turn your work and then you'll just go and if you have to turn the chart upside down for your ease but all it will be is rows two and three over and over again for another 30 inches from this spot. 
okay and then you're gonna go 30 inches and then ending on row three you will do the edging just like you see here and therefore you'll have a project that is fully the length that you need. So you just need three balls of Karen Simply Soft yarn, a five millimeter size H crochet hook and have a good time. So once you're done then let me just quickly show you how to weave in your ends. So in order to do so, so this is where I ended before, if you put your ends into a darning needle, especially if you're wearing it out. So all you're just gonna do is put it into a darning needle and you're just gonna drag the stitch it underneath the stitch work. So don't impede on any of these picots at all. So just coming underneath the stitch work for one, go the other direction for two and then go in the other direction for three. And you do that for all your tail ends that you have and then once you have that done then you can just safely trim it down to the project. Out of sight, out of mind and it'll never fall out on you as well. So this is how you do this. This is the Pig Ribbit Shaw by Yarnspirations.com, an original pattern by Karen from many years ago and it's still just as fabulous. We'll see you again real soon. I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crab. Bye bye.